please join me in our call to remembrance. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and we loved darkness rather than light. God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light. But all who do what is true come to the light. We have heard this story many times before. Let us focus ourselves and hear it with fresh ears. Come, let us worship in spirit and truth. Let us pray. Lord God, we meet beneath your cross this evening. We meet friends, strangers, mourners, grieving for the loss of love in the world. We meet because we want to understand the awful things that happened. We meet because we want to be with you, alongside you on your cross. And in our meeting, we keep silence. We keep silence in a time when words fail us. We keep silence as you kept silence on the cross. And so we keep silence with those crucified today, with those who live in darkness, in despair, and in pain. We keep silence with those treated as today's scapegoats. We keep silence with those robbed of a sense of belonging in our society. We keep silence with our neighbors, near and far, who march and advocate, protest and pray for justice. We keep silence with all who mourn a loved one. We keep silence with those working for peace, standing up for independence, or rebuilding their lives in places of conflict. We keep silence with those known to us today who live in darkness, who find it hard to see beyond death and desolation and despair. In the pain and misfortune, oppression and death of the people, God is silent. God is silent on the cross in the crucified. And this silence is God, God's word, God's cry. In solidarity, God speaks the language of love. Amen.
My enemies wonder in malice when I will die and my name perish. And when they come to see me, they utter empty words while their hearts gather mischief. When they go out, they tell it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They think that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I will not rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted the heel against me. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him when no one was present. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. And in his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of their grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was speaking, suddenly a crowd appeared, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man?
Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests had held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone from whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked him, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace. This is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail to the king of the Jews. And they struck his head with a reed spat on him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saves others. He cannot save himself. He is a king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud, loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran up and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last.
On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. And on that day, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. On that day, the mourning in Jerusalem will be as great 
as the morning for Hadad Ramon in the plain of Megiddo. The land shall mourn, each family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself and their wives by themselves. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who, he, he who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. Now, now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the day they rested according, on, the, on this Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. For a brief moment, 
I abandoned you. But with great compassion, I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you.